What's going on everybody? Welcome to the first, I guess this is the first episode of Humble Home. Yeah. Um, we obviously had Humble Abroad was our prior YouTube channel. Um, and we're gonna switch it up and call call it Humble Home now. Yeah, for many reasons, but... Yeah, well, because we started it in Korea. Yeah. Jessica, I'll give her the prop. She started it in Korea. And now we're bringing it back home. Yeah, to our current home with a lot of our trajectory of our life has really changed since we started Humble Abroad. So like, it's been crazy. we've kind of created um, a home, if you will, here in what we're gonna go into. But, um, and then we are also purchasing a new home. So creating, literally, it's just a journey with us of our life and creating home pretty much wherever we are together as a family, so. Yeah, and so some t serious transition, yes. um, you know, right now, free agent right now, so it's weird not playing baseball at the moment. Mm -hmm. Uh, I've started Extraordinary Athletes. Mm -hmm. We've started it because you've been a big help with that. Please. Extraordinary <laughs> Athletes, we'll go into that later on. But um, Jessica's got her, she's working now too. Yeah, I gotta, you know, carry the family. Oh he doesn't have God. a job, so. Oh my God. <laughs> go. No, 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 I enjoy working. Never saw myself as being a stay-at-home mom for too long. Um, and the opportunity has come for me to stay home still um and be able to work and do what i love which is um sales in the marketing world and selling a software so this just started so it's been a lot of transitional time a big transitional time in our life but all good stuff that's the crazy part so and for those of you that don't know and just now tuning in haven't seen any humble abroad i'm xavier scruggs professional baseball player and Jessica Scruggs. I'm the, just his wife. The beautiful one sitting next to me. <laughs> we got two sons, Zeke and Xander. Yep. Zeke is two years old. Xander is now about 10 months. Not about, yes. 10 months old. <laughs> um, but yeah, so we're excited to kind of share our story with you guys. And I'm newer to the YouTube thing. Jessica started the original YouTube, so yeah, I'm still learning. Yeah, years ago. And here we are starting a YouTube 2.0. When I was the girl, uh, across the world pregnant at one point in a country where I didn't know and I literally had at that point it was a Sony really small camera that I took everywhere and Xavier found it very annoying when we had to film intros and outros and film everything about our daily life when I would make him take the baseball the camera to the baseball field he would get really annoyed and really upset and here we are. She's just trying to steal my followers, that's no, all. No, 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 that's not the point, is that he just thought the idea was rash and just, it was just dumb. I didn't really know anything about YouTube. Yeah, well here we are time. three years later and he is wanting to restart well, the YouTube channel. I'm very, I'm very thankful that you produced that. And... I didn't produce it, we had help. I just got oh, yeah. content and we were literally across the world and I would send um, footage over. We had two people in New York City that were editing and did everything for us. I would literally just shoot and send Dropbox clips to them and they put everything together. In our first year, we had 42 episodes. Yeah, and then 42. year two, we kind of dropped because we had a baby. But 42 episodes, that's a lot. Yeah, it's a lot. A lot of but videos. I'm thankful because we have that content. We have a lot of great experiences from Korea. Um, great experiences having our first son over there in mm -hmm. Korea being that's born. That's on YouTube too, it's kind of That's weird. on YouTube too, so check that out. Mm -hmm. But um, you know, all that content is reusable and now we're able to offer new content for you guys with a lot of stuff going on in our life. So let's break it down. Our, right, our first episode, our first topics, I, I wanted to say, well, for me, I wanted it to be the five things that we learned during our time in Korea. Okay. Um, I'll start it off and okay. I'll say patience was a huge thing for me. <laughs> Uh, why are you laughing? <laughs> because the only thing that I find patience for was patience in when you told me the news that we were going, patience for not wanting to literally just leave. Be like, yeah, deuces, we're getting married in two weeks, but I had to find the patience in me. We made this decision to go there two weeks before our wedding, and I had just gotten a major promotion at work. So that's the patience that I had with you, but I think you're rolling into something different. But Yeah, no, for, for me, I thought it was, it was patience was, had to be something that was built inside of me. I've always been kind of a patient Definitely. guy, you're but when you're dealing patient. with a totally different cultural experience mm -hmm. um, in an area, we lived in Chengwon, um, Korea, which was not a big English speaking area. So I had to be patient along with 
whether that be trying to get a taxi to mm. go to a restaurant, whether that be trying to order food, um, you know, at a restaurant, mm -hmm. trying to communicate the right way. Also, mm -hmm. you know, be patient with the baseball there was totally different, you know, and, and learning new ways to navigate that. So I felt like for me, I had to take a step back and say, hey, you're not in control. Right. Um, you know, you have to relax. Uh, some things are not going to go the way that you want it to go. Um, so you got to be patient in those situations. So I felt like that was huge for me. And even already being a patient type of person, I felt myself getting mad a lot of times when things weren't going my way or as fast as I wanted them to go. Right. But a lot of that was on me too. It was like, hey, slow down, understand some cultural issues, understand some cultural things that are going to be Not different. Not issues, but differences. Yeah, there differences. wasn't any issues at all. Like, like Well, I, I, I'm thinking specifically, like when I first got there, I had a translator. First of all, I need to be thankful that I had a translator. Shout yes. out to Ma Kang Marusol. Um, for the first year. For the first year. And the second, yeah. second year we had Cho. But but thinking that, okay. The most soul, the most patient person. If we could have had, talk about patience right. and like having yeah, a, a best patient. match for our family for Xavier's personality, which is patient. And my personality who is like, I want things now. This, our translator the first year was literally God sent. Yeah, yeah, definitely. And the but, second year too, but. It, but just talking about like baseball wise, you want information like so fast and you're like, hey, give me that data on this pitcher. Or give me this on uh, you know, on this hitter, whatever it may be. Uh, but I have to remember they don't do things necessarily the same as us. So it was important for me to learn how to be patient in that sense. Um, you know, also had, the good thing is I had a couple of foreigners with me um, that had been through the process before, so I got a lot of um, feedback and learned a lot from them. Mm -hmm. um, and they, that was one of the first things they told me is like, hey, be patient, man, that things work a little bit slower here. Yeah, they're definitely not in a rush to do anything. Um, but I think that really was a great thing for our first year of marriage to go over there and just have kind of each other, which leads us into our next one, um, which is communication. And we talk about just having each other. We were Honestly, I mean, our, our translator, we had a few other foreigners, but communicating, I mean, where we were, I know we'll touch on this a lot, is like where we were is, is not a Seoul, or if you're familiar with Korea, a Busan, where like in those two parts of the country, there is a lot of foreigners, Australians, people who are really actively trying to speak English. And we were in more of like a small town. Yeah, so small communicating, town, port, port city. Yeah, it was a port, not poor. Port. Okay. City. So like this right here was our best friend because we had an app called um, Cacao and Papago. Papa yeah. And in Papago was their translator. Don't ever use Google Translation because Google Translation would really mess things up. But we were learning to communicate at a grocery store, at a taxi. Like we were getting in a car and trusting this person that we were communicating the effectively to get us somewhere in a country that we didn't know, or like communicating when I went to a train station. Like I rode those trains day, night, all the time by myself. Xavier yeah. rode them, but even like the subway system, it's like a New York subway system, it's insane. So I'm communicating with just my phone and just showing. But my favorite part I think of communicating is, and I've said this before, is like smiling and showing your joy is like the best way of communication. So like as long as you were happy and you were smiling and you were trying to work with them, they definitely tried to work with you as far as communication. I mean, I had to, I remember the first day, I didn't know how to get to the second floor of the grocery store because it was on the opposite side and it's like they have um, escalators, I guess, right. in the grocery store and I, and I just kept doing circles and then finally someone looked at me, they knew I was like wearing this bright pink shirt. I remember and they're kind of like I was like sweating I had my camera I remember and I was just trying to communicate <clears throat> with them that I needed I don't even know it was something probably as simple as like hangers and I, I didn't know how to how to tell them that I needed something as simple as a hanger but <laughs> I mean it was just like pure that happened of like, a lot of times oh my god yeah and then of course like you start to get a hang of things and you do it but even communication with some of the best friends that I've made I'm so best friends with Korean wives, baseball wives and I still talk to them. We walk them then in our home here in Tampa. Yeah. And I would go to coffee dates and I would literally just sit there and play with their children and like their babies and stuff. And they would be talking and they would just be so interested in, in what I had to say or my life or my input or how America was. So communicating that to them was just, it's wild. Yeah. And I just remember when Xavier first got there, 
who'd be on the phone with me in the taxi or when he was in public and he would literally talk like if the sentence in America had 12 words he would say like four so it was like I was I would never understand like why are you talking to them like they're like for lack of better words dumb like it's like or they're me six or it's five like, years yeah old. Like, like yeah like they're five years like me go to Lotte Mart which is like their grocery store and I would literally be like what are you doing and then like a week after I got there yeah you I mean, understood. I understood everything. The less words that you use, the better. I mean, we right. had a nanny that pretty much was at our house seven days a week for hours on hours, and her and I pretty much had our own language. She did not speak one ounce of English when she started working for us. Yeah. And and I didn't even understand what they were saying half the time to each other because they had a little their own half Korean, half English language. It was wild. It was wild. <laughs> and I and I trusted her with my kid because we were able to communicate effectively on what was best for Zeke at the time or EJ as they called him. And um, it was great. I mean, I really learned how to literally communicate in a country where we knew nothing yeah i think another thing read. too is like we learned how to better communicate with each other mm -hmm, mm -hmm. um so obviously when we went over there it was just us two um you don't have a lot of english speakers you're not gonna have a lot of friends right off the bat so we had to communicate a lot to each other and and understand each other's cues when when we're emotional maybe mm -hmm, feeling down mm -hmm. or happy sad whatever that may be so we had to learn how to communicate and, and made a stronger bond with definitely our own marriage. I mean it was our first year it was one of the most crazy which leads us into our next one most vulnerable years of our lives as, as husband and wife we had been dating for a long time so we kind of knew you know knew that part but when you go to a country and you're literally allowing yourself to be vulnerable with no friends your family's on a 14 hour time difference so like communication with our family and friends right. is hard because yeah. I mean they were going to bed and we were waking up or opposite so like we'd catch up on social media like in the morning when they're already going to sleep you know or like right. or talking to our mom and dads you know just like crazy hours of the of the day so we allowed ourselves you can talk on this one to be vulnerable for our first year of marriage um, and then ended up getting pregnant in Korea so like our first couple months of pregnancy in a country where we knew nothing but was so good to us. It's, it's crazy. No, we've always been, and that's something I'm happy about our marriage and our relationship is we've always found ourselves um, very open mm -hmm. um, and we want to be vulnerable. We want to show that we have flaws, mm -hmm. you know, that n not everything is perfect in our marriage, not everything is perfect in our family. Um, you know, whether that be by social media, whether that be by, you know, just sending pictures, showing mm -hmm. video, YouTube, whatever it may be, we want to show that, you know, good and bad. We want to show the good and bad. Definitely, definitely. Um, so we've always tried to be vulnerable and that's what we're going to do with this YouTube. We're going to just show you guys the ins and outs of, of our home, um, our everyday activity, mm -hmm. baseball life, outside of baseball life, and just show you guys that not everything is perfect. Right, we had to step out of our comfort zones like major. Like we didn't, we walked, we went to this country, Xavier left in like beginning of March and then I joined him like two weeks later. But like, talk about vulnerability. Like he walked into an apartment or we, he landed in Korea. We didn't know what our apartment looked like. They didn't send us pictures. And that was like huge. Like we wanted to make sure that like where we were gonna be spending most of our time was gonna be nice. But like they didn't send pictures. So we had no idea where we were gonna be laying our heads to sleep for the next, at that point we dropped just year, it ended up being the next year, we lived in the same place. But like, talk about vulnerability. Like we had no car, like we didn't know if we were gonna have a car. Like we, like, did we have a car the first year? We didn't have a car. Yeah, so we didn't year. have a car, like but I don't even I was whipping it the second year. Yeah, I'll we had a great that. car the second year, but like we didn't have a car. I mean, but then, and even being and giving, giving birth and, and then you showed the birth on yeah, YouTube. Yeah, that's like, like vulnerable. If there's, if, there's, if there's as open as you can get, is showing your own birth right on YouTube no definitely and talk about vulnerable and becoming best friends like that giving birth was year two for us I had the whole all the raw footage and like all of my Korean friends girlfriends came over and they watched they were so interested like in watching my birth which they've given birth like talk about vulnerability and like becoming like we're, we're an friends. open book yeah <laughs> yeah we're very we're very open we were but always that's kind very of our real morals and values of course and know, we, because... we decided that before we got to Korea we we're gonna be honest with ourselves honest with our family honest with the people like the fans I mean 
talk about also vulnerability. Like I opened our house to some fans. Like yeah, I, I became, I became friends with all the fans. You know, like so did you. Like Xavier I had to was, tell that story on KBO on ESPN yeah, broadcast. Yes. Like um, he did. It was awesome. We just were so vulnerable to everybody, and I guess I never really thought about it until this point. Like we never acted like we were too good for for anybody. I mean, Xavier signed autographs. We would be eating. He'd be mid bite, and he would never say no to anybody. Like we would be eating, and there would be kids lined up outside of the restaurant and the owner of the restaurant or wherever we were would say you need to wait until he's done eating and people would wait but he never said no like he was we were literally just like an open book like yeah, yeah. insane but that's insane. that's our family that's our that's our home we yeah. basically made home which is the next point is, is that like which is the next thing we learned is yeah, how to make home, home wherever we are right yeah so home is where the family is um like i said xavier walked into this apartment and didn't know and of course we didn't know year two thankfully we had the same apartment so we knew what we had and then having a kid there we already kind of had set the foundation of where we were living i had met my doctor before we left and we also had another doctor there that you know helped us get pregnant because we were really trying and it was like literally everything felt like home there was not one part of korea that did not feel like home I, which I is even... wild because when he told me we were going <laughs> i literally looked at you and i was like i'm a cuban girl from south florida i've had exposure to zero Asian culture, I just didn't understand the culture, the values, where on the map, like where I was going, anything. <laughs> so like to think that like Korea, like I'm here three years later, saying Korea Talking about home. wanting to go back to. <laughs> yeah, I was like, let's just sell our house and like while we're building the other house. And but another thing move. I was gonna mention is like even the experience of, remember we went into a, to your teacher, your friend that oh, was yeah, a teacher. Oh yeah, yeah, like, And crazy. basically there was a, it was an English academy for mm -hmm. the Korean, Young children, young in, Seoul. children in Seoul. Mm -hmm. They spoke very good English, but we got to go there and read a book, um, just hang out with the kids. Um, but basically, what what I was saying is like we extended our family. Like one hundred percent. Everybody was family to us. That was you know that was really positive in mm -hmm. our life. We mm -hmm. wanted to make a positive impact we, while and we, we were made, there. And we made that pact. We said we're not going across the world to just sit in the apartment and mope around about yeah. how we can't talk to our friends and family. Like we said, if we're going. I was like, if I'm going, I'm gonna go all in. Yeah. And we did, we created literally a home. We're friends with, still friends. I mean, we have these Korean wives and, and players, I remember, because Xavier made a really good point that when he got there, he would always ask the Korean players about their family, even though there was a language barrier. And one thing led to another, and he pretty much was like the first guy on this team that ever really like had a Korean player in, in our home, or that we yeah. went to dinner with them, and we went to their home. Um, I helped a, 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 um, a friend of ours, the catcher, Taegun, I helped them pick out their apartment that they're living in now. Like I went house shopping with her, you know? Like she took me to my doctor's appointments. Like mm -hmm. it's like the doctor that helped us get pregnant ended up helping one of our close friends too get pregnant now and they have twins, you know? Mm -hmm. like. Like we created this family. So many connections. Yeah, like we created a family of just friends. And obviously with other foreigners, you know, we always made a good point that when we would visit their cities, we would go to dinner with them. and yeah. Or when they would come to our city, I would let the girls, you know, come to our apartment to get ready because we lived across the street from the, the stadium. Or with like Mel and Alex, when I had Zeke and my parents and Xavier left, Alex Rojas, Alex um, Mel's wife, talk about family, came over and stayed with the, with me for 10 days, had no experience with the newborn, just yeah. came so that I could nap and, you know. Shout out to Mel Rojas Jr. and always, Alex and always crew. crew. Yes, <laughs> um, just like little things. At home really is where we where we are together. I mean, yeah. um, baseball's taken us all over the world, literally, and it's and I think not that, that was kind of gonna be one of my last things that mm -hmm. I've learned is that traveling is everything. 100%, which, who would have ever thought, like we've never been to Europe and I would have never thought that I'd be to three countries in Asia before even going to like Europe, you know? Right, like, right. like we did everything. I went to every single like series. And, but you haven't really seen anything unless you've Travel, been to these other 100%. places. And, and no picture, no video, you know, nothing is gonna do it justice unless you really experience it. And try to experience it like they would, not just like a, 100%. you know. I mean, um, yeah. What do you call when you, um, somebody that, you know, comes and visits, 
what's it called? Just what? a tourist, like okay, not like okay. a tourist, yeah, yeah. but trying to dive the into the yeah. culture. Definitely. Um, so traveling is everything. We got an opportunity to go to Thailand, mm -hmm. to Tokyo. We visited Osaka. Um, we yeah, Osaka. Osaka as well. Jeju Island. Jeju Island. I was going to say Jeju because that's one of their vacation in, spots. Yeah, and so, Goje Island. Goje. Um, you know, just an opportunity for us to open our eyes and, and see other places. Yeah, like talk um, about... But baseball has brought us so many places, Dominican, Colombia, Mexico. Yeah, different parts of Mexico, different. all over the US. Yeah. Like, it is wild. Like, I, I mean, I always knew I wanted to travel and we haven't really stopped traveling since we have kids and that's another thing, you know, we like just because you have kids, doesn't it doesn't stop your life. Right, so we've right. taken the kids. I mean, I took Xander at, at Especially while they're young. Mexico, 100%. They say to travel while they're younger, right? Yeah, we've kind of missed that stage already because both of our kids are going to be on the move real soon, but yeah. it's not going to stop us. Poor you Xander, know? during COVID-19, he hasn't been anywhere. Yeah, we just took him on his first like real vacation and he's become like a new baby. Like he's <laughs> like so happy to like see the real world, but it's definitely travel, you know, like um, it just creates those experiences that, I mean, that kind of put all of those things into perspective that we just named, you know, patience, communication, vulnerability, and creating a home wherever you are travels kind of just like the circle around it like yeah it brings it all together, together. Mm -hmm. that's a good point well thank you guys for joining this first episode of humble home this is humble weird to home. say humble home right uh, get ready for the ride from it's gonna be like humble home baseball. for a little bit and then it's gonna be back to humble abroad watch oh <laughs> no, god I mean, where are we going <laughs> oh god just because no, we go kidding. so many places like yeah, no, definitely. I hope, um, I mean, we'll see where it takes us. I mean, we're definitely going to be moving soon, so um, we'll take you on that whole process as well. And if you guys have any questions, comments, um, write them below or, you know, what are you on social media? Xavier underscore Scruggs, Twitter and Instagram. And I'm Jessica dot N as in Nicole dot Scruggs on um, Instagram. You can reach me there. Um, what do they say? Like, subscribe comment below is that what yeah it? like subscribe <laughs> comment below and tell I'm, your I'm learning friends. the blogging <laughs> oh gosh good luck guys <laughs> all right guys thank you guys for tuning in again xavier scruggs and jessica, jessica scruggs thank you guys humble home we'll see you soon how did the bloggers do